because now I'm going to be up and down because it can fail. So let's just try this. Then we're going to go to competitive equilibrium in, with the long run. And I'll do a few more things, but uh, right now I just wanted to do one more thing here. So this is where I'm going to be on. And let's see what happens with this. So you can be um, able to see me. Uh, the camera is here. So this is me right there. Can you just tell me if you see me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, very good. So hold on a second. Uh, you guys remember that we talked about isotropic lines as well as um, iso, uh, if you want the production function, I drop the thing, but uh, it's okay. Production function, hold on a second. I'm using a piece of paper because this doesn't work too much, but it's going to work. Alright, so I got it. Alright, so production and I'll put it in 2D. And someone asked me a question, right? So what happens when you do it, you do it in general, like right? with two inputs? And, and guys, I, because I can't see you, I gotta leave, I gotta make sure you no one talks because you're no. starting the class. So that, that's very important. Uh, so uh, the important thing here is that if we go back to the board, right? We're gonna look at something on the board. What I have in mind is the following, right? I have in mind the following. I have Q is equal to F of x1, x2, and uh, somehow this is the uh, uh, this is the production function, right? The relationship between the output and the input. All right. So then the second thing we have is we have some sort of a, a profit function. So I'm just going to write it down, and you guys are going to uh, remember what I do here uh, because of this. And we did it before, but I'm going to write it in this way. So we got to remember uh, this part, which is uh, your profit level as a function of price, quantity, as well as the inputs. So what you have here is the price, the output, Q is the quantity, then you have W1 is uh, the price of the input uh, 1, and W2 is the price of the input 2. All right, so this sounds familiar, right? It's a whole of three. And what we just did with the competitive equilibrium is we said, okay, we're going to take this to another level. We're going to say given P star. <coughs> given P star, we've got to find the best Q, right? The best uh, supply, the best quantity supply in order to maximize profits. All right, so of course there are several ways to do it, right? And we talked about this. We could replace this by the four cost function, and then boom, we go back to stuff we did uh, in. Uh, uh, we go back to stuff we did in, uh, I should look at maybe at the camera sometimes, I forgot that. Uh, but we go back to uh, what we did before. All right, so what I want to do is, I want to do this graphically. I want to find Q star, right? The best one. And what is this Q star? It's the quantity supply given P star. But I want to do this graphically. So let's go ahead and do this graphically. So we're going to go to the graph here. And um, on this graph, I have Q on the z-axis, the y-axis, and I have x1 and x2. And the first thing I'm gonna draw, the first thing I'm gonna bring in this graph is the production function. All right, so let's do this. I kind of built it before. And uh, I'm gonna use my maker pen to uh, bring it here. And let's do this, so boom. What's the right one? All right, you guys can see it? Yeah. I, I am not going All right. to no, no. I'm actually outside of the board in here, so I think I'm good. But this is a production function. So what, what do you got to do here? I'm going to drop the pen. I'll uh, just to show you a little bit what's going on. So this is your typical production function. I didn't try to go too uh, weird or fancy here. It's a production function uh, where the more of the input to you buy, so if I go here and I look here, the more of the input to you buy, oh, it, the, oh, sorry, this is input one the more you produce, right? And uh, same deal with uh, input two, right? Input one, input two. So as you increase, you're gonna be able to produce uh, much more. Okay, so uh, what do you guys think about the property of the production function? What, what could you tell me about NP1 and NP2, right? If I take a derivative, for instance, with respect to X2, so X2 is right here, if I take a derivative, so I go in somehow that direction, right? I try to see what happens because I increase x2 and I want to see how quantity um, reacts to it. I'm calculating NP2, right? The marginal product of 
um, the Morton product of, uh, out of input one. Well, what can you tell me about uh, MP1 and MP2? Like, if we think about this. But I, I feel like because it's concave, maybe not here, kind of messed it up, or maybe I want to do something else. But over there, because this thing is concave, then we have diminishing marginal product of input one and diminishing marginal product of input two. I would say that, right, Jason, if you, if you bring it a little bit here, uh, in this place, it's kind of flat. Eventually it goes down, like more input one, more input two is not gonna increase output. And remember, this is output right there. All right, so we got this. So now I wanna find the best quantity supply. How am I gonna do this? What do you guys think? I can't see you. I don't even know if I'm facing you. Uh, am I facing the wall? Uh, Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, so am I crazy with that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I got it. Yeah, we should say that. Hey, first time we do this, so uh, if I get out of the guardian, what they call the protection, then I can see you, but right now I can't see you. So, what are we missing? Uh, can someone tell me, or just say it, I can't see you, but what are we missing to find the best one? So we have the production function, it's in red. It's the constraint, right? What do I need to find the best one? What do you guys think? You gotta talk that now because I can't hear anything. Isoprofit planes. Remember, we had these isoprofit planes, so we need an isoprofit plane. So I'm kind of going to remove that thing. I'm going to remove it. Come on now. Right? So that's the first piece. I'm going to move it away. And I'm going to go and grab something that, that is in this world. It's a piece of glass, so it's transparent, but hopefully you can see it. Can you guys confirm that you can actually see something a little bit transparent? And I'm yeah. 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 All right, so I'm going to wow. stick it right there. They really didn't do that. All right, so one thing that I have. Oh, hold on. Two seconds. Two seconds. Uh, this is physical. So this is a piece of glass. So if I throw my basketball. <laughs> and that's why I'm down on the basket. So what we have is an isoprofit plane, meaning every combination of X1, X2, and Q has the same process. Alright, so now I have a question. I'm gonna create something. Um I'm gonna change the material. I'm gonna go to Q. And I'm going to make this on the surface. So now I'm going to draw something. Hey, Jason, maybe you want to look at it from here so that you can see it a little better. Thank you. And I'm going to draw. Uh, oh, not enough ink. Okay, hold on one second. I didn't think about that. So we're going to erase this stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of strings going. Uh, uh, I call it ink. But, uh, so uh, now we have this. And I'm going to create this. So now I want to know when I go like this up the hill like this on this plane. I've created something straight, but I'm going along x1, right? This is x1. What is the slope of this thing? What's the rate of change for this? What do you guys think? I mean, and remember, it's a profit function, so it's not some weird stuff. PQ minus W1x1 minus W2x2. This thing right here is a slope of W1 divided by P. Sounds familiar? It's part of the optimality condition, right? So this tells me that if I want to stay at the same level, right, and I increase x1, I must increase q by w1 over uh, uh, p. All right, same deal here. This will tell me something about somehow the cost, right, of me maintaining the same profit, or what it takes for me to maintain the same profits, and therefore what it takes for me to increase profits. All right, so I'm going to erase these two things because I just wanted to show you this. So now we have the ISO profit line. So what do you think I'm gonna do in order to find the best point? Remember, right, it's the same thing as what we did before, I'm gonna be here again, uh, what we did before with the ISO profit line and the uh, production function. So we gotta bring back, so hold on a second, move. We gotta bring back, so a lot of little details, we gotta bring back this, look at that guys. I'm bringing this here. I have a production function and I have one ISO profit line. What, what do I need to do now in order to find the best one? I, I would say that I know that this point right here is, oh, maybe I'm going the other, other way so that you guys can see the camera here. This point right here gives me the same profit as this point right here. 
And Jason, if you want to get the little closer, that'd be great. And this right here gives me the same profit, but I think I can beat it. And why is that? Because look, if I'm here or here, this tells me W1 over P, W1 over P, oh sorry, W2 over P, it tells me the cost of hiring more labor. But this slot, this slot right here is MP2. It tells me the contribution, so I want to go a little higher. So I'm going to do another thing. I'm going to clone. I'm going to clone this one, and I now added another. And I hope you guys can see it. Maybe Jason, you can move back a little bit. Uh, thank you. I've added another ISO profit line, and I'm going to add another one. And I don't know if you guys can see it well, but I'm going to add one. I'm going to barely touch. I'm going to barely touch, can you, and you guys can see it from here, so this way, Jason, this would be the part where uh, we have the uh, solution. You can see that this hole right here, oh, I'm going to maybe indicate this with a little sphere. This point right here is the one that barely touches, barely touches, oh, sorry, no, don't worry about it, you just have to undo. Yeah. That is, that is grabbing the stuff. Okay, no problem. I'm going to freeze it now. All right, so let me uh, freeze it. That's good. So no, no problem, because the other one doesn't matter. It's not It's not useful. So we'll just go with this. This point right here is the point that barely logical attains on the highest possible ISO profit line. And therefore, that's the solution. It's Q star, and that's where uh, graphically we've shown the optimal conditions, meaning MQ1 is equal to W1 over P, and NP2 is equal to W2 over P. P star, right? Because we're thinking of our first uh, definition or our first condition in the competitive equilibrium, and this is your point. This is the quantity supply in equilibrium if we find a P star. All right, well, I think that's it for, for today. Hey, thanks, Jason. All right, well, we'll talk more. I'm going to continue in, in real life. All right? All right, thank you. Bye. <laughs>